Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to dive into the basics of fluid simulation in Unreal Engine 5 using Niagara fluid particles. This is going to be a really exciting video because we will be creating this necromantic fire effect using a static skull mesh and also learn how to sample a skeletal mesh using fluid source as demonstrated in this burning man example. We will first cover how to set up a source emitter. Get started with grid 3D gas particles and understand key concepts like density, temperature, fluid advection and dissipation to control how the fluid moves, spreads and evolves. We will also explore how to style the look by customizing color and density to create your own unique effect. So let's get started. Alright, so first make sure that the Niagara Fluids plugin is enabled. Once that's done, you will get access to a whole range of emitters, templates and system examples specifically designed for fluid simulations. But before we dive into fluid emitters, let's start by setting up a basic Niagara system that will be based on a static mesh and will work as a source emitter. First, let's add a static mesh location module. This one is actually generated using Meshi AI. I have only retextured this in Substance Painter. So if you're interested to try out Meshi, I have added the link in the description. Okay, so now you can see the particles have aligned themselves along the shape of this mesh. If the density seems low, feel free to increase the spawn rate and tweak other particle settings as well. If you are not familiar with sampling static mesh in Niagara emitter, then please watch my static mesh disintegration tutorial. So this emitter I will be using as a source layer for our fluid particles. So I will rename this as particle source emitter. Now it's time to add the Niagara fluid particles. From here I will click add emitter and type grid gas. This one grid 3D gas master is going to work for our use case. So let's select that. Now don't let this huge emitter set up with all its modules overwhelm you. You're not building a fluid simulation from scratch here. Epic has already done that heavy lifting. These modules are pre-configured to work seamlessly together, allowing you to build a custom fluid effect that's both visually impressive and easily adjustable without diving too deep into technical complexity. That said, it's still important to understand the basics of what's happening under the hood. Knowing how to properly configure this system will help you make it not only look great but also keep it flexible for your needs and performant enough for real-time gameplay. Okay, so in the initialize particle source, I will set the particle source type to emitter. And from the emitter binding, the binding type is other. Over here, we need to add the name of our emitter, which is particle source emitter. So this still didn't take the source. That's because we need to set this up first in the source emitter as well. Now here, I'm going to add a module called vector noise value. This helps us configure certain fluid properties that we will pass in from the source emitter. And just to be clear, it doesn't have to be this specific module. You can use any module that fits your setup. But this one comes with a useful feature called remap output value. When I set this to uniform, I am able to control the remap range input and output. This helps normalize the effect in a controllable way. Next, I will add a couple of particle parameters. First is going to be the density, a float value where I will assign the noise x output from the vector noise module. And next is going to be the color. This lets us directly pass the color from the source emitter to the fluid. Then in the particle update section, I will add the set fluid source attributes module. So the fluid particles are now correctly taking the shape of the source emitter. The density attribute here, we can link it with the density parameter we created in the particle spawn section. And we are not going to be changing too much of the rest of the parameters because we already have a lot of customizations option in the grid emitter as well. So now we are going to look into them and understand how we can get the kind of effect that we are looking for. What we are seeing right now is a pure black smoke effect. To adjust this, let's head over to the grid 3D gas material controls. You will see a property here called smoke color. We can tweak this color value here to get the visual tone we want. Although currently the smoke still appears mostly black due to the lighting and the density. Before we change anything else, let's move over to the 3D gas quality overhead section. So this red bounding box you see is because the draw bounce is checked in. Now I'm going to convert these five quality settings into user parameters. 
This way I can adjust them without digging into the emitter module every time. A key setting here is the resolution max axis. Be cautious with this one because even slight increases say going from 200 to 250 can heavily impact performance or even freeze your editor. So avoid blindly cranking this value up. Instead a better approach is to keep the base resolution lower and use the resolution multiplier to scale the visual quality. And even pressure solve iterations is also going to give you better visual quality when you are increasing the number but it doesn't show any significant improvement in quality after a certain value so i would suggest keep its value between 5 and 10 so far we were only rendering the density of the fluid that's why the color was not quite visible but now we are going to render the temperature as well and for that over here i'm going to set the render temperature from none to black body all right, so now you can see this really looks like very realistic fire and smoke. This essentially sets up the foundation for our fluid particle system. I can directly control the velocity from the source emitter by adding an add velocity module. So this is coming out really well in the viewport. I have just attached this particle to our static mesh. If you want this fire to propagate along all direction, the best way to do it in the add velocity module of your source particle, multiply the sample normal of the static mesh location module. That is going to give you the direction of the particles along the normal of the mesh and you can really play along with these parameters to create some very very interesting effects. So I don't want this much of velocity. So in the initialized particle source module over here, I reduce the velocity scale to 1. So now we need to further customize our temperature and the density because currently the fire particles are too bright. So in the 3D gas material controls, I will reduce the temperature color gain to something like 0.1. Now I will go over here and play along with the advection parameters. You can increase the advection velocity and increasing the dissipation rate is going to dissipate the particles faster. You can modify the fire color and the smoke color from the grid 3D gas material controls module. Here I can see that the result is not looking as good in the viewport as in the Niagara editor. This looks really blocky and doesn't quite follow the shape of the skull. It is just a bug that can be quickly fixed by first deleting this from here. When we add this back in the viewport, it works fine. Let's just try attaching it again in the mesh. Yeah, now it is properly taking the shape of the skull. Although the resolution is a bit low, so I will increase the resolution. Now in the source emitter, I'm going to add a shape location module with its shape set to sphere. This adds a spherical offset on top of the existing static mesh location. It gives me a bit more control over how the particles are distributed. The density scale parameter controls the overall thickness and opacity of the smoke. The density radius scale affects the spread radius of the density. Notice how the particles now appear primarily near the top surface of the source mesh. You can further customize the density behavior in the gas material controls module alongside these temperature settings. I will also adjust the smoke and fire color properties from here. Next in the advect fluid attribute module, we are going to customize the velocity and the dissipation rate to control the flow of particles. There are quite a few parameters to customize inside the fluid attribute module of the advect scalar stage as well. The dissipation rate controls how quickly the density and temperature values fade out over time. And the subtraction amount is the value that is being subtracted from the respective fluid attributes every frame. It is useful when you want more aggressive fading of the particles. Now let's spend some time customizing these fluid parameters to reach our final look. By now you probably have a good feel for which parameters impact visuals the most. So let's keep experimenting and adjusting until we land on the exact style we are looking for.
it is already coming out really nicely and from the details panel I can further customize its look. This also works beautifully with dynamic lighting. Just rotate the directional light and you will see how the shadows and colors of the fluid respond in real time. The smoke is looking a bit too dense so I am going to dial down the density scale over here. Alright now this looks like something straight out of an alchemist's lab doesn't it? So I want the fire to appear darker so I'm going to reduce the fire color intensity over here. Along with that I will also lower the density albedo which makes the fire more transparent adding to the darker more mystical vibe. I have also exposed a whole range of user parameters for all the properties I found interesting enough to customize. Alright, so we are done with this necromantic green ghostly fire effects erupting from the skull and I have to say it looks incredible. It perfectly captures that eerie magical vibe we were aiming for. But we are not stopping here, right? Up next we are going to take things even further by learning how to sample a skeletal mesh as a fire source. Instead of duplicating the previous emitter, I will just create a new one. And I just need to copy this particle source emitter. Here I'm going to add initialize mesh reproduction sprite. This is responsible for sampling a skeletal mesh. And to ensure that for an animated skeletal mesh, the movements also get samples. We need to use the update mesh reproduction sprite module in the particle update section. So now let's create our gas 3D emitter. This is the emitter I'm going to choose for this. So here I will adjust the quality settings and here I will enable the temperature and color attributes. For render temperature I will use black body. And then I will set our particle source. Keeping color grid to smoke unchecked will let you use the smoke color from here directly and same goes for the fire color as well. While enabling this will let you use the color from the source emitter. Now I will continue tweaking the density and the temperature parameters till I get the expected outcome. Your fluid particles also have collision settings that can be adjusted from here but by default it is collidable to any objects that has collision. And to demonstrate that I am going to use this sphere. You can see how it reacts in real time when I am moving this along the surface of the fluid. This can be very useful when you are creating some interactive fluid system or a fire propagation. You can turn off the visibility of the sphere if you just want to use this to deflect your fluid particles along any direction. Now we are going to implement divergence. So for that make sure read divergence is enabled from here. You can also set the divergence scale from here and also from the source emitter where you are setting the fluid source attributes. The divergence is not working so make sure you uncheck the local space for your source emitter because when it is sampling your source static or skeletal mesh then it takes the world location of the mesh and the divergence is calculated from your world space. So you can now adjust the divergence as per your requirements.
Now let's tweak the radius. So increasing this value expands the fluid coverage allowing it to reach more areas of the mesh. Now it really looks like the entire skeletal mesh is on fire. And on top of that you can further adjust the divergence to control how the fluid spreads and flows outward. Just keep tweaking until you are satisfied with the overall motion and feel. It still looks like the emitter is spawning slightly above the bottom of the mesh. And you can fix this in the gas sphere source module. Just adjust the emit position to shift the emission point downward. And then you can tweak the emit radius to better control how wide the source spreads. This will help you align the fluids more naturally with the base of the mesh. There are a lot of additional properties to tweak over here as well. Like this non-uniform scale along with the initial density and the temperature. Let's continue tweaking the other properties like the advection properties over here. All the essential properties I want to customize, I will convert this into user parameters so that I can tweak them directly in the viewport. I will set the radius to calculate the particle radius so that I can adjust the fluid radius directly by setting the particle scale also. So I will make this as user parameter as well. Now I can change the radius scale from here so I can make really really thick fire as you can see over here. Now in the initialize particle source module if you set the attribute composition mode to max instead of add you will notice the fire becomes much denser and more concentrated. That's because max takes the highest value between overlapping contributions leading to sharper and more defined fluid accumulation. While add blends values together often resulting in a softer more diffuse look. So it's really up to you to decide which composition mode better suits your style and intensity you are aiming for in your effect. Alright so that's it for today's demonstration. If you'd like to go deeper into fluid simulation or try it out yourself the project files are also available on my patreon page. So consider becoming a member to support the channel and get exclusive content. If you are interested in learning more about Niagara fluid particles, I have got plenty more such tutorials coming your way. So make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss what's next. Thanks for watching and as always keep creating. I will see you in the next video.